All right, what is up guys? It is a very, very wonderful day. Early Christmas basically for me. Um, this Wednesday I've spent all morning doing uh, ethanol tuning with Frank Mabotech. Um, we are all in revision five. It is about noon. I think we started about nine, nine thirty. Car's pulling really good, really, really good. I'm gonna get a video for you guys this afternoon from the inside. Uh, but this package is here. It has a lot of really neat stuff, and we're gonna install the trailing arms today. And then uh, I'm gonna adjust my shift linkage from that incident. It's still, it's not adjusted back 100%, so I'm gonna fix that. Um, I'm gonna do that off camera, but I'm about to grab this big ass box. Let me show you. And it's huge. It's freaking massive. It's a big boy. It's like up to my waist. It's like 60 pounds, so I'm gonna drag this inside, and then we'll uh, we'll see the contents. All right, here's everything unboxed. These are everything's used, obviously. So this guy already had the uh, O34 trailing arm bushings put into his so I'm just gonna install mine and then send him mine and I got a whole box of parts over there waiting to go to him it was a trade plus cash he needed like stock springs and a couple of other bits but here we got white line control arms I don't remember I think there's two versions I don't remember which ones they are but these are super nice like nothing's beat up at all I mean just little dirt but whatever and they're like way lighter than you'd expect like way way lighter um, I'm really curious to see how the stock one is going to compare. And then we got the aluminum subframe from the Audi S3. Very nice. Should be a lot more uh, stiff since it's aluminum. Aluminum's pretty strong and lighter. Aluminum's very light. And you got the other control arm here. And we got uh, RS3 brake ducts that are already trimmed to fit on these. But uh, this stuff won't be going on. For a minute, I'm debating on getting a full-on dog bone mount while this uh, subframe's out. I think I might as well, instead of getting an alignment twice. So I might wait, order a full-on dog bone, and then all this plus the dog bone go in together, then get an alignment. But the trailing arms, trailing arms are going in today because I need to ship his stuff back out because he needs his car together to trade in. So that's what we're doing. I'm about to jack the car up, take the wheels off. Um, they have instructions online on how to do this it's really really simple i think it's like seven bolts in total a couple clips and then they go in so we will see how long this takes us all right before we get started here this is the tools that i used um i actually didn't even use the hammer you'll need these um some some ratchets the 18 16 i got two different 18s because one's a, a different size and then i use this as a punch like i said and uh yeah, I'll show you how this works. All right, so I already got the other side in. And what we're looking at here, I'm going to try and do this. Okay, so you got these two bolts here. They are 18s. Then you got four right here. They're 16s. And then up in there is one more 16, I believe. The first thing you got to do, there's pins. You see that little circle right there? There's one on that one. And then... Up on this one, you gotta push the pin out and then this bracket will come off your trailing arm. Now, the guy I got these from left his on there, so I'll show you real quick. This is what it'll look like from the other side. Boom, I just took a, wherever I put it, a little Torx, and it just pushes right up. Can't do it with the camera in my hand, but you get my drift. It just pushes, boom, and then this whole bracket comes off and then there's another one I showed you there's two all right then you got the two 18s the four 16s and it comes right out it's pretty easy for those first two 18s you might need a breaker bar or if you have a good um, impact they're on there tight they're on there very tight I give you torque specs here um, once we're putting it back on but those two 18s are are tight tight and if you're doing it on the floor here like me you don't have much room for leverage so I had to pull off the bar there and use that as a breaker bar but uh that's like the only difficult thing about this is to get those two bolts out 
That's it. Just take note, uh, the thicker one is the top bolt of the two 18s you gotta do. The ones that are nearest the back, like that. All right, once you get your four bolts out the top, that middle one's not anything. Your two here on the side, you have another 18 here. You'll Im impact that, you don't gotta hold this side, it's welded. And then you just swap in the new one. And then uh, reverse. Off. See the old one here. That yeah, looks like junk. Compared to the new one, not junk. And earlier I said 034 for some reason. I don't know why, but they're super pro. These are super pro. So there you go. Slide on in, line it all up, torque it all down. I give you torque specs here at the end. I'm just giving them a bunch of good ooga doogas. Seems to be working out. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got the inside bolt here. That's your torque for that one. For the four 16s, boom. And then the last two 18s, boom. Um, this is on O34's website if you want to check that out. Um, this is spherical. They, they have a different style of bushing that they use. But uh, yeah, they have a video on there that shows, they have like a GoPro under the car and shows um, the control arm and turns and, and stuff like that to show you what the difference is between stock and an aftermarket solution. Um, definitely watch that video if you're considering this. If you go to the big Mark 7 MQB page and type in trailing arms and look at all the people um, talking about how good they are and how they change the car, they'll sell you right away. All you need to go is read a couple people talking about how good they are. I, mean, I haven't even driven the car yet and I'm saying they're good. So, I mean, <laughs> but I'm going to uh, put the wheel on, torque everything down, wash up, and then just go for a quick drive. I've been up for a very long time. I gotta go to work at 10 tonight and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I worked all night as well. So I'm only gonna get like maybe 5 hours sleep. 6, uh, six hours sleep? Something like that. Um, yeah, but I will let you guys know exactly what I think. The install's super easy. You got any questions, comments, concerns, uh, let me know in the comments. And I'll talk to you guys either tonight or tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you guys what. Um, I went out yesterday after, you know, installing all that stuff. I didn't go too hard in the corners because I was extremely tired. I was, I was dead, 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 and there was a bunch of traffic. It was like a little bit after lunch and whatever. This morning, or on the way to work last night, we have like a half corkscrew that you know the highway off going on the base. Hit that pretty freaking hard. Uh, not as hard as I normally do, just in case you know the car was going to act funny. But it felt really, really, really good in the back. I don't know how to really explain it. It's uh, like, it's just more planted. It, it feels a little more predictable, I guess you could say. Um, but even then, this morning, I have like one real, real nice turn to the lefty and I can downshift in the second, probably, I don't know, probably going about 40 before you take the turn. And I always take the turn and I, I normally ease into it, but this morning I was like, you know what, I'm going to hit it hard. So I full throttle in second, you know, in the turn. It was like, Whoop! and I like, it, not that dramatic, but it had like a little, like it, it came out, like and it, I was not expecting it. It came out hard, not a normal, like, eh. it was, it was like a violent wanting to go out. You know, I just corrected it real quick, let off the throttle. Um, holy shit. It felt really, really good. I hope, but uh, what I'm mentioning in my head is, is at autocross, now with this all-wheel drive tune and those control arms being in, like being able to get 
on the throttle just hard enough in the corners to get the car to rotate a little more with not as much input maybe and just a little baby slide to help me get around the corners just ever so slightly quicker um, I can always adjust the suspension uh, dampening and all that depending on how the track is but also you know on the street I run 35 PSI and on these RSRs the 35 PSI is like you're you're taking out a lot of room for grip. If I ran like 35 at an autocross course, it would not be a good time. They would like, they would want to be kind of everywhere, but I usually run like 28 PSI when I'm doing autocross. So that'll be a lot of added grip. So if the rear end did want to come out, I don't think it would with all the extra grip is what I'm getting at. So we'll see. I don't know. We got an autocross next weekend. And I'm just, I'm really looking forward to it. But this weekend, Monday's video is going to be epic. Uh, this whole weekend is going to be epic. So tomorrow, Friday, going to Amarillo. Um, there's a dyno night, which I'm probably not going to dyno my car. I don't know yet. There's a front wheel. It's a two-wheel drive dyno. But they have prizes for highest horsepower, lowest horsepower, loudest car, and uh, highest front wheel drive. And my buddy, Michael's trying to talk me into doing the the front wheel drive one, but then that's 60 bucks to do that dyno night. And then I'm Saturday morning, I'm going to actually get dynoed and do tuning with Frank for the ethanol blend. Um, so I don't want to pay 160 bucks in dyno runs. And then it's $70 to race Saturday night. It's a, the flashlight shootout in Amarillo, eighth mile flashlight start. My class, I believe it's called street outlaw payout is $1,000 cash and then a thousand dollar ceramic coating from one of the local uh, detailing places so that first place for my class is looking really 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 nice uh, with that being said i will be running obviously this ethanol blend uh this is probably the only times i will be running this ethanol blend is for events like this where uh money's involved and street shit where money's involved um i probably won't be running ethanol for autocross, maybe I will, and just turn the boost down a whole bunch. It's like, right now we're, like I said, what, five revisions in or so, and there's over twice as much timing, literally over twice as much timing at, say, 40, 500 and up. It's double than what it was on pump gas, and the same, just the same amount of boost, around 28 to 30 pounds is where I have been staying at. Um, I'll probably turn it up, like, 31, 32 for this event. Saturday night. We'll see. We'll see what it makes on the dyno. Adjust the torque accordingly and then go from there. Maybe do one like 31, 32 pound run on the dyno just to see what it makes as like a backup extra kill. You know, I made it to the finals. I need to win this shit kind of, kind of tune, but we'll see. There's a lot going on this weekend. Uh, then we got the shit going on next weekend. And then the weekend after that, there is a big um, cash days event. It's a hundred dollar buy-in. It's like a small tire. I think it's small tire, but I might enter depending on who else enters. That's actually the weekend of my birthday, August 10th. And then the weekend after that, there is autocross Saturday morning in Lubbock, which from here to Lubbock is about 110 miles. And in Lubbock to Amarillo is about another hundred miles. And in Amarillo to here is about another hundred miles. But there's, there's autocross that's Saturday morning in Lubbock, and then autocross Saturday night in Amarillo. I don't know. I'm just writing at this point. I'm tired. I just got home from work, but I might do that double autocross event. Anyway, stay tuned. A lot of shit going on. A lot of testing to do. We still got the. I need to order a dog bone and get all that front end stuff in and aligned. And by the time that's going in, I'll have the money to buy the big brake kit. We'll buy that. Get that in. Then it's a lightweight battery. Then it's time for a corner balance. So that's about. The next month's worth of uh, what's going down. Anyway, you made this far. You probably already hit the thumbs up, but if you didn't, please hit it. Let me know what you guys think about all this shit down below, and I'll uh, I'll see. You.